The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Prescott! Pollard, straight chair, straight straight chair. chair. touchdown! Parsons has second. it! Prescott keeps it, yes. and he bangs it into the touchdown! And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Nick Harris, Josh Rodriguez, and Kyle Yeomans. It is the morning after a 31-10 loss for the Dallas Cowboys up in Buffalo as we welcome you into Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. We are live from the star in Frisco, Texas, in the SWBC studios. We've got Isaiah Stanback, Nick Harris. I'm Kyle Yeomans, and it wasn't pretty in Buffalo. It was never pretty. Uh, Buffalo jumps out to a 14-0 lead. Dallas musters a field goal and really outside of garbage time, that was about it for the boys. Is uh, They were down by the biggest halftime deficit, 19 points, or excuse me, 18 points, uh, since they were down 19 against Washington in 2020. And then they lose in this one 31-10 with a late touchdown from C.D. Lamb. Nick Harris, you were on the scene. You were there. You watched it. The, the weather wasn't as bad as it definitely could have, could have been, but uh, the play on the field wasn't very good. Either. Yeah, that kind of leads into my point. The weather was not the issue. Um, no. Jonathan Hankins not being in the game. I don't think that was the issue. Oh, that was a big issue. I, I completely well, disagree. Well, well, it's, it's well, a, I like it's what you're saying. Hold on, Kyle. Hold on, Kyle. Hold on, Kyle. Man. Hold on, Kyle. Hold on, Kyle. Hold on, Kyle. I think you, me hot. You, you've got an MVP award yeah. for Jonathan Hankins. Look, I, okay, hold on. Jonathan Hankins was not the reason they lost that game. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's, do you think th- – we'll get to Keep that. Going. We'll we can to get that. to it. The reason that the Cowboys lost this game is because they don't show up on the road. And it's it's becoming a theme over and over, year after year. These big games, these big tests on the road, mm. they don't show up. There was no physicality. I, I mean, uh, sure, there's probably a lot you could take away from these past two games. You can look at and say, okay, these two last two games against the Seahawks and the Eagles, really physical games. Probably more phys- top three physical games that the Cowboys have had all season. Yeah. So uh, maybe there's a little bit of layover going into this game. But still, you have to show up on the road against a team like the Buffalo Bills. We were talking about their offensive line last week. All these guys are 6'5 plus, 320 plus, and they all showed that throughout the game. They were getting into that second level, yeah. dominating Damone Clark, dominating Marquise oh. Bell. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, it was the same deal. I mean, Dak Prescott was running for his life at times, and Dak was not great either. I mean, he he made some poor decisions. He wasn't trusting his he wasn't trusting the timing with, with C.D. Lamb and Brandon Cooks. And I'll, I'll talk about the the running game really quick, just because I know that that's already an early talking point here. Jonathan Hankins being in that in the middle of the field doesn't prevent the edge not being contained the entire night. James mm-hmm. Cook still runs for probably 120 yards last night if Jonathan Hankins is in the game. There were so many running lanes around the edges. It wasn't just the A-gap. Was the A-gap abused? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 1,000%. But it was coming around the edges, and, and there was no contain. Um, uh, James Cook was breaking tackles, looking like Barry Sanders. I, it was it was tough from the very beginning. But I think the biggest issue with this, with this team right now is they can't show up on the road. And there's another opportunity to do that next week. But now, since you lose that game, you have to figure out how to do it before the playoffs come around. Yep. Because that's it's it's becoming a certainty now that you're going to have to go on the road in the in the wild card round. Well, it's been a talking point too. I mean, even Mike McCarthy addressed it yesterday, talking about the lack of or the the presence of a gap, the the fact that there is a gap between home and away, and hearing your head coach address that to me, that's that's a concern because. If, if your head coach, a lot of times, those even if it's obvious you have a gap home and away, you're not going to address it from a head coaching standpoint. You're going to talk to talk maybe within closed doors, within your staff, maybe even uh, not even address the team in that instance. But he said it out loud yesterday in the post game. He's like, "No, there's a problem here, and if there's literally if there's a full blooded problem of having a, a, a lack thereof consistency on the road." I have zero confidence going into these big pressure games on the road in the postseason and getting a win. The only one I can really think back to in terms of big pressure wins where you you got it done on the road in recent memory was the Tampa Bay win last year in the wild card round. That was about it. And that was the only time that they've carried that over from what they do at AT AT&T Stadium to what they do on the road. 
I hear what you guys are saying. I agree partially with what you guys are saying. As a former player, even though it might very well be abundantly true that their play is diminished on the road versus at home, there's no real justification. Mm. You know, like, yes, it's, that's, that's a factual statement. They have this year played like trash on the road. At home, they play amazing. The stats back that up. Coach backs that up. But there's no real reason as to why you would play differently on the road. And people are going to be looking for a reason. They're going to be looking for a fix. There is no fix to that. It's just how it's happened. There's no – you don't have a different approach to the game because you're not at home. You might have a little bit more energy, a little bit more momentum at times because you're you're vibing off the crowd. You sometimes, depending on the environment, you might have to go to nonverbal communication because of because of the environment. But in terms of your execution, there is nothing about a different environment that changes your execution of a play. There's no, there's nothing about a change of environment that changes your assignment or your ability to execute that assignment. Like there's, there's nothing, literally nothing about playing on the road aside from the noise and what you have to do to account for the noise. That's it. Like, literally it. Not the, you get out there early, you do your walkthroughs, you find the play clocks, you know exactly where, the, where everything's at, you find where your, where your sideline's at, and all the kind of information that you need in terms of identification. Outside of that, you're playing ball. So, this narrative of, you know, the Cowboys playing like trash on the road and we got to find out why, there, there's no why. There is no why. Could it just be as simple as this, this <clears throat> team – Maybe there's an inexperience. Maybe there's an immaturity with this team. Oh, I, I think there's a never... lack of discipline because that was my that was my number one thing yesterday was lack of discipline, penalties, bad assignment. Yeah, I mean, but penalties are going down. Frustration. So yeah, I mean, yeah, there's three there were three bad penalties, right? Personal foul penalties. Yeah. That, that obviously when they happened, they had a, a, a dire effect on the game. However. The penalty mark has been going down. I think we were at 14, 12, 7, 5 now, right? So that number is going down. Yeah, and that but was they were matter. impactful. Yeah, they're very impactful, right? So, yes, some of those stat lines that you wanted to address, they're going in the positive direction. Now, the impact that those that number still has on the game is obviously it showed up in the game. Obviously. Mm-hmm. But, again, as people are trying to dive in and trying to figure out this role versus home, I'm telling you as a player, you can ask any player, as outside of the alterations that you have to make and to account for the noise and the communication to how, how that noise affects your ability to communicate effectively in the game, there is nothing else that's different. Cowboys are not playing. They're not practicing on their home field. They're at their home field eight times a year, whatever it is. Like There's, there's no ad- true advantage outside of the fact that you're – that your crowd is there. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. And I would love to hear anybody else that says differently. Because there's no, you can't find an excuse. You just got beat up. And the teams that are willing, that have the physical ability to beat you up and have the determination to be resilient and to be just unwavering in their approach to expose your weaknesses, they have beat you up. And that's something that you have to acknowledge. That's something that you have to identify. And you got to find a resolution for it. I think if you look at three of these four road losses, I'm going to leave Philly, the Philly loss out of this equation just because I feel like they were in that game. It's completely different. I'm looking at Arizona, San Francisco, and Buffalo. They didn't bring physicality to either of those three games. Uh, They didn't bring discipline to either of those three games. So when you're trying to figure out where the road woes come from, I I think you have to look at those two things first. Is – is it a home versus away situation? You know, like, is there a lot to put stock into when it comes to that? Probably not. I think there's some truth in that. But I think there's a big difference between sleeping in your own bed the night before, being able to pull up to the stadium on your own accord, and but having you, a having a little bit of juice, having that little bit of fresh feel, and knowing in the back of your head you don't have to get on a flight back home after the, after the game. Whereas going into Buffalo, you're coming off a hotel bed, you're going into the stadium with an entire team. you're in a hotel team. bed the night before anyways. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what they're doing nowadays, but back back this year they've been sleeping in their own bed. Yeah, so I mean, it's been a big talking point about the hmm. home, you know, home success and things like that. I don't know. I I think there's something to put in there. Uh, Sure, did it not maybe not work for the seasons that you were playing? For sure. I but you have to look at what's different about this team. That what the difference about this team is they are sleeping in their own beds this year. They are not bringing the physicality or the discipline on the road. You have to look at those things whenever you're trying to evaluate the problem because those are the only things that are different between this and times past. I just think that. They're getting beat up. 
They just get they're just getting beat up. Yeah, I mean, the and people are trying to yeah the physicality. That's that's what's happening. Yeah. That's you have an undersized team. Your your team is undersized. That's the reality. And teams that have the personnel to beat you up and bully you, they do so. The 49ers are more physical than you. They beat you up. Philadelphia, you went out there, you had a competitive game, you lost the game. Okay, cool. Arizona caught you off guard. You weren't ready. Yeah, you didn't show ready up. For that one. Okay, Buffalo, we're bigger than you. We're bigger than you. We're more physical than you. Who's the biggest guy that you have on your defensive line last night? 290? Mm, versus Chauncey. their huh? Yeah. 290 versus their 360? The Lord, the the smallest guy they had on their line was McGovern at what three fifteen? Yeah, we're bigger than you. <clears throat> we're bigger. We're more physical. Show us that you can stop us. 49ers do the same exact thing. Yeah, we're bigger. We're bigger. We're stronger. We're more aggressive than you. Show us that you can stop us. Yeah. Teams that have that 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 have that personnel number one have the attitude and 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 have the gall to simply just punch you in your mouth. You got to punch back. And if you can't do so, then guess what? I'm I am literally more physical than you are, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's no different than if I had a basketball team and I had a bunch of seven footers. You know what I'm doing? We're going post game the whole game, yeah. throwing it down low. We're going post game. You know why? Because you can't do anything about it. We're not putting up no shots. Yeah, no shots. <laughs> Dude, you're six three. I'm seven foot. We're going post game. Yeah. Right. So it's it's a physicality thing. So how do you address that? Well, first of all, they need to figure out who the heck can come in this building and and start warming up as Jonathan Hankins is gone. That's number one. I know you talked about the edges. You're absolutely correct about the edges. It's not just the yeah, middle. they didn't play well either. Right, they didn't play well either. But there is a gaping hole, and I said it on the show on Friday. If I'm the Buffalo Bills, I'm turning around, and I'm handing the ball off to Cook, and I'm coming downhill until you show me that you can stop it yep. consistently. And they didn't. They didn't. So why would I change anything else? It just so happens that they ran into an offensive coordinator that was willing to keep handing it off 49 times out of 64 plays. That's the difference. That is literally the difference. By the way, just based off of weight, this is on the Cowboys official roster. This is not what they're playing at right now. I can guarantee you that. But Mozzie Smith is listed as the biggest player on the defensive side. 337 is what he's listed as. There's no way he's Mozzie, 337 right Mozzie now. Mozzie might be 295 right now. Yeah, he's maybe. He's slimmed down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> by a little bit, I mean significantly. But then you've got... Hankins, who of course was out 320, and then after that, it goes all the way down to Neville Gallimore at 302. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, there was a size discrepancy. I, I said it on Cowboys game night last night. This was a bludgeoning in Buffalo, is what it was. And they they continued to run the rock. They continued to to expose Dallas defensively in the run game, whether it was inside or outside. I do agree with you in the fact that it wasn't all Jonathan Hankins. He played a significant factor. Him being in the middle there would have completely changed things. I, I, I fully believe that because it would have allowed the linebackers to play better. Damone Clark did not have a good day. Uh, it would have allowed for the edge rushers to possibly be able to pin back and have some more success getting outside because, I mean, they were double gapping everywhere. And I would love to go – I can't wait to go back and look at the film today and, and really see how much he was missed in the middle because he was missed significantly. But the other part about it is – the offense had no rhythm because mm -hmm. the defense was playing downhill as well. Mm -hmm. Just because the offense was playing downhill, James Cook was playing downhill, and there was a way for them to be successful there, defense did the exact same thing. They weren't scared of what Dallas brought offensively, and you could see that. It was one of those games, and you can't blame one person. You can't blame Jonathan Hankins missing. You can't blame Dak Prescott. If you're blaming Dak Prescott today, and I know there are some fans out there that are doing so, that's a lazy take. This is coming from from Isaiah's book. He calls it the the book of Abonics. Everybody, <laughs> Everybody got beat yesterday. Yeah, absolutely, everyone had a pain. Nobody, nobody did their job to a perfect extent yesterday. Maybe with the exception of Brian Anger and and, and Brandon Aubrey, and even that's a stretch this on is, both of this those. This is cages. the game of football, and in the game of football, if you can't win the trenches. You don't stand a chance. Yeah, and they got beaten. You trenches. don't stand a chance. It's the reason why I, I, whenever I put on my GM hat, I would spend all my doggone money on the bullies up front. And I would fill in the gaps everywhere else. Because <laughs> defensively, defensively, you couldn't get home against their offensive line. No. Right? And first of all, they only threw it 15 times. Second of all, you couldn't stop their run. So defensively, you were undersized. You got beat up. You got bullied. Flip it on the other side, okay? Their defensive line. We talked about how this was going to be the most athletic defensive line that Dallas has faced to date, right? San Francisco has a freaking really good de defensive line, right? So this that's up for that's up for argument. But these guys are right there with them in terms of athleticism across the board, 
right, in terms of every guy being able to beat you, all the way from Oliver the in, in, on the inside all the way to Leonard Floyd on the outside. We didn't even talk about Von Miller last week. And Von Miller really didn't have an impact on the game, but nah. you still got to respect him, right? So these guys were athletic, and everybody was getting beat up front. It killed you when Zach Martin went down. So we're talking about guys going down and then your team still having a confidence and a mental strength to overcome those adversities. I'm not sure that Dallas has gotten to the point where they can overcome major adversities and major losses in the game. You have, you're missing your big dog on the inside on defense. You're missing your big dog on the inside on offense. Didn't overcome it. We've talked about that before. Absolutely, we have. And even with those two guys, it would have been a bloodbath in the trenches. Like, yeah. it, it would still— it, I'm talking about from this point. I'm talking about from mental. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then take those two guys out, and that's when the mental really comes into, comes into equation. But, I mean, I have to give it to TJ Bass. He didn't play poorly. It's yeah. just—I it. I feel like whenever Zach Martin got pulled out of the game offensively, they just—they mm. did what they did in Arizona, yep. where it was like, yep. okay, everything quick game. Like, mm-hmm. we, we have to get the ball out quick. And the timing wasn't there because the secondary for Buffalo played so well last night. I mean, they were— they were on CD. They were on Brandon Cooks. Those guys were not able to create a ton of separation, and it threw Dak out of sorts, and the offense just never found consistency right. until that final drive. And I was kind of tracking, like, before that final drive, they were on trend to have, like, a top 10 worst total offense performance in franchise history, but oh. then that final drive kind of pushed it along and got them outside of that range. But, yeah, it was tough, man. It's a really good team. Buffalo's mm-hmm. a really damn good team. I, it's They're not 8-6. and six. Like They're 8-6, and six, but they're not an 8-6 and six team. That's a nightmare of a team to catch in the wild card round it's going to be a shame if they Nightmare. do miss the playoffs yeah. and chris collinsworth hit or not chris collinsworth whoever the uh, olsen. greg olsen said it yesterday and he said if if they sneak in watch out for buffalo i agree yeah. and we knew that going in we talked about that significantly last week don't look at the record don't look at seven and six this team's not seven and six yeah. and especially when they have a run game that can do that around josh allen and then you have the the ability of josh allen who we talked about all week, and he threw seven completions. I mean, we we talked about Josh Allen at nauseum last week, thinking this was going to be a shootout. It was going to be him versus Dak, and it was back and forth. That wasn't the case. They they took the air out of the football. James Cook had an, an incredible day, 25 carries, a buck 79, and then he had 42 through the air and 76 a touchdown. percent rushing. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Most or least amount of completions in a win in Josh Allen's career. Seven completions. Least and amount of passing attempts by an opponent quarterback for the Cowboys since like 2000, I think it was. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it's, yeah my entire lifetime. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. All right, when we come back here on Talking Cowboys, we're going to continue deep diving into the 31-10 loss, even as painful as it may be. And uh, we're going to take a look at the offensive side. I, I, I like what, Nick, you just brought up about the changing of mentality from a play calling standpoint is this something to be concerned about moving forward or is it something that could change based off of the learning that you did here in week 15 more talking cowboys continues in a moment todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable and now todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour but the good news is todd has at&t 5g that is fast reliable and secure and he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew at&t 5g fast reliable secure it's not complicated 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Black Rifle Coffee Company serves premium coffee to people who love America. When you drink Black Rifle Coffee, you are directly supporting veterans, law enforcement, and first responders in your community. Black Rifle's expert roasters love coffee almost as much as Texas loves football, so it makes sense that America's Coffee partnered with America's team. Go online at BlackRifleCoffee.com and fuel up with the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com to fuel up today. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive, Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at BankofAmerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile bank app only available on select mobile devices message and data rates may apply member fdic welcome back into dear doctor the show where i answer life's questions with an ice cold can of dr pepper sheila let's hear from our next caller would you dear doctor my friend supported me during a tough time but what's the right gift that says thanks for being a shoulder to cry on okay this one's easy i say give her a delicious dr pepper 
Nothing says, thanks girl, better than a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here on Talking Cowboys, this portion of the show is brought to you by Quaker Oats, a super trusted superfood. Quaker Oats, the official oatmeal sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Isaiah, did you get them in this morning? I did, actually, Kyle. That's I needed good. them because yeah. it was a little somber around here to, you know, the, today, but it's okay. You gotta, sometimes you got to get your oats in and get you get a pep in your step. Sometimes, and this is just a, a peek behind the curtain a little bit, some of the, sometimes the best conversations that we have are the weeks following a loss like yeah. this because – Coaches want th- want their they want to air out their dirty laundry from the week before. They want to talk about something specifically. This morning there was not, not a whole lot of talking. Uh, you know what? I saw Coach Solari this morning. Okay, and he had a pep in his step. And Coach Solari, you know, was walking around. He was. I he's think been he's, around for a long time. He's been around for a long time, and I think he was surprising people by the energy that he had, you know, because everybody's kind of walking on eggshells a little bit this morning. Sure. And Coach Solari comes and he says, "It gets better. It gets better." It gets better than I was like, all right, coach, I see you. Like, yeah, the loss sucks. And you learn a lot about yourself in losses. Yeah. If you're able to acknowledge where you where you were short, where your shortcomings were. You learn a lot about yourself, much more about yourself in losses than you ever would in wins. And it's very important that this team identifies this consistent weakness that they have. Mm Mm-hmm. In their approach to games, it is not a capability. It is a willingness to be relentless and to be physical regardless of the adversities that you have and the shortcomings that you have in terms of size. Some teams are just going to be bigger than you. That's why I do not <clears throat> look at a previous game from one team versus another team and say, oh, we're going to do this because they they lost to them. Like, matchups matter. Yeah. Matchups matter. And unfortunately, Dallas – Size, size, and aggressiveness hasn't been their thing. They can beat you a lot of different ways, but if you have the personnel and you have the relentlessness, relentlessness to just just bang your head against the wall all day long, you're probably going to have some success. Some success, success against Dallas, and <clears throat> that's something that they have to identify, and you have to find a way. Like, how do we work around that? Like, not every team that you're going to face is going to have that capability, but the teams when the teams that you do face that have that personnel and have that uh, that approach. You have to find a way. I, I'm with you. Um, one quick thing. Mozzie Smith got a sack last night. I, it was credited to Golston whenever I left the press box, so this is news to me. I'm just now checking. <laughs> wow. Um, that was that was wild. Um, but, yeah, I, it's – it's it's. we talked about it in the first segment. That's his it's first sack, same, by the way. Yeah, it's his first sack of yeah. his career. Yeah. Um, what do you want to see change from this past week to this coming week? So that, was kind, of, that was kind of my question was yeah. – was, they haven't lost back-to-back games since week 11 and 12. Back-to-back in the same season, I might add. Since weeks 11 and 12 of 2021. So it's been a while since they've lost back-to-back games in the same season. Okay. It, it, that means back-to-back Correct. weeks. From this one, like you said, from where this loss was and how bad it was on the road and from Nick's points in that first segment, from your points there about learning lessons – is that number one lesson learned physicality? And then my follow-up immediately is, can you learn how to ramp up physicality in the span of seven days? Yeah, I don't think there's a way you can just be tough. You know, you either are or you're not, mm. you know. Um, so mm. um, is that a problem? I, I don't think it is, though, because we've seen this team be tough. Okay. I, that's I, I, I love going back to watch that Seattle game and parts of that, that Philadelphia physical. game because that – that was a team that came in, Seattle specifically, came in and was more physical than you at the very beginning. Yes, they were. And then they were able to match that and exceed that by the end of the game, especially there late in the second half when they needed to put a run together to win that game. And they did. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I've seen it from this team before. Uh, you've seen it whenever they're dominating opponents at home. And uh, we can even look at a couple of road wins like Carolina. That game got sneaky physical in the second half. Yeah. I, I, we've seen it from this team this year. Um, I just, I, it's it, it goes away sometimes. And it kind of feels like, it's felt like for the last 
four or five years, you can watch a Cowboys game, and within the first eight minutes, you know how it's going to go because it, it's the physicality is either matched or it's not. Um, the intensity is matched or it's, or it's not. Um, and it was it was that, it was that way yesterday, and it's going to have to be fixed before you go to Miami next week because I'll, I'll get to you because that's a really <laughs> physical team and it's a really fast team, yeah, and those speed. are two things that I think when you pair those things together, I worry about a lot. Yes, I Mr. Stanback. Your next two games, okay? No, I, let me let me start here. Your most recent game was against the number six rushing team in the league. Mm-hmm. Your next two games mm-hmm. are against the number four rushing team and the number two rushing team in the league. How do you fix what is apparent mm-hmm. that you need to address right now? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a huge concern. It's a huge concern. San, San Francisco is number three. Okay, yeah. you lost to San Francisco. They yeah. beat you up. Arizona is number seven. Hmm. You lost to Arizona. Buffalo is number six. You lost to Buffalo. Okay, so three of the top seven teams you lost to so far. There's two more teams that you still have to face, Miami and Detroit, that are in the top five. Yeah. Have so, they, what's the highest-ranked rushing team that they've beaten so far? Philly. Well, and you lost to them once, too. Yes. What are they? They're number 10. So you have not beaten a team this year inside the top ten in rushing. I don't like that. And the, the difference, too, when you look at these <laughs> next two games is, yeah, James Cook was awesome last night, but he he carried the ball 25 times. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the difference with Miami and Detroit, they have two-headed monsters that will be fresh, that will be you know, rotating in. It's going to be it's gonna be tough. Philly. They're going to have to figure that one out. Philly's number nine. Philly's number nine. Okay, number nine. so you have beaten the top ten yes. rushing attack. That's good. So of, of the top of the top nine teams in the league, you have already played. You've already faced one, two, three, four of those top nine rushing teams. You lost all of them. Mm-hmm. You still have the number two and the number four to go. Yeah, and without Jonathan Hankins, most likely. Yes, without Spe- Jonathan Hankins. Yeah. Uh, almost certainly in Miami, and then it's going to be – I think it's going to be kind of a game-time thing in Detroit, but, or against Detroit, rather. So, yeah, it's it's tough. I, I think I think the biggest thing is, you know, you look at the guys that are replacing Jonathan Hankins, Mozzie Smith, Neville Gallimore, and you want to ask, yeah, those guys have to step up and improve. Yes, they do. I, I need it more from Damone Clark because I, I, I'm yeah. not expecting it from those two right now. I'm ex- but I, I expect it from Damone Clark. So uh, Damone Clark had a very rough game yesterday. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that he, he can fill running lanes a little bit better. Stop guessing. Uh, that was that was a big thing for me, especially once it got down in the red zone. That's where James Cook had most of his success, it felt like. so. Yeah. Um, Just need those guys at the second level, including Damone Clark, or anybody else who decides to walk down there, uh, they have to be more decisive, right? Even when Van Der Esch was playing, Van Der Esch would choose the wrong hole relatively often. Yep. But you just have to be decisive. The reason why it's important to be decisive, even if you choose wrong, is because now the players behind you know exactly where to go. Because so if you go right, and even if you choose right and they go left, guess what? As a safety, now I know I have to feel left. Right? Because I'm playing off of you. But if you're playing any, you know, any mini mighty mo, then you're trying to, you know trying to decide on what direction you want to go, now I'm left in no man's land, and now I have to hesitate, right, because I don't know where to go because I'm the last line of, of, of defense. The defensive line has to play better because they can't allow guys up to the second level. It's the reason why we talk about how important it is to have big boys up front. We talked about this many times. Up to the trade deadline, I was beating against the table. I'm like, get another Hankins. Yeah. Get another Hankins in here because if Hankins goes down, you're screwed. <laughs> There were two spots we were banging for <laughs> at the trade deadline. Yes. It was interior defensive line yep. and interior offensive Office line. line. Yeah, that was. Kind but of, but, but, kind but of the, the one spots. thing that we knew was that if you don't have a big boy presence up front, your second level is is, is done. They're toast. So you're talking about Damone Clark, the play that everybody keeps watching, where he got hemmed up. Well, you got a 240 pound Damone Clark. You know, he's built like a football player. All those things. Yeah. But there's a 360 pound offensive lineman that has his hands on his chest. You're not getting off of that. Why is there a 360-pound offensive lineman at the second level? Yeah, it was Deion right? Dawkins. But yeah. he was really at the end because Damone Clark came out to the outside, right? He he came all the way on the outside, left side. He got locked up, cut, cut up inside, and he just couldn't get off the block. Yeah. Right? So you have to address things in waves. The D-line is supposed to be the first wave. The, the, the linebacker is supposed to be the second wave. And then your safeties are your last line of defense, <clears throat> right? And everybody has their roles that they have to play. Yes, the second level has to play better. They have to play more aggressive. 
They have to come down heel. They got to hit their offensive lineman in the mouth. They got to get shed blocks, right? They have to do a better job of shocking and releasing because right now what we're seeing is a lot of guys getting caught, right? And those little shoulder pads that come down, once the big guys grab on, I don't care how strong you are, you're going for a ride. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. This is the NFL. Once those guys lock on, they put those little vice grips on you. You are going for a ride. That is bench press range. Once you're inside my shoulders and I grab you, goodbye. Yeah, yeah. It's a wrap after that, and then that, that just keep again another physicality point. Yeah, that's all it is. And I mean, Demon Clark had a tough task anywhere last night because it wasn't just the one play where he was getting pushed back by Deion Dawkins and he was getting pushed yeah, all the way into the goal play line coverage on cook. He had to play yeah. in coverage <laughs> multiple <laughs> times and, and James cook routed him up. I mean, that was that's just, not even a, that's not even a real list running a corner. You could say he cooked him. Yeah. He cooked him, oh. but that's not even a fair matchup. Right, no. like, like that's like you have that's an unrealistic expectation. I mean, linebackers in this day and age of the NFL are expected to cover Running backs How out of the backfield, uh, not as fast as Cook. I completely agree. I get it. Okay. Mismatch. Right. There's there. I'm not disagreeing. Okay. Right. I'm just saying, from Demon Clark's standpoint, he's expected to do that from a scheme standpoint. That's why they draft guys <clears throat> like that. That's why. I mean, honestly, if you go all the way back to, to 2021, that's why they drafted a guy uh, like Jabril Cox yep. because he had coverage ability. Correct. Then he got hurt, and then Correct. that coverage ability that. was was significantly hindered because of it. So. There's there's ways that these linebackers are put in position that are either going to put them in a, a spot for success or a spot to fail, and it felt like last night he was in a spot yeah, to fail. Coach Brady drew often. that up. He yes. knew, he knew once they came out, they knew he said, "Hey, if I, when we come out in this formation, Dallas plays man ninety some odd percent of the time, right? It's like first in the first in the league or second in the top three, I know for sure in the league in terms of man coverage. So when we come out in this personnel." I know, based upon this alignment, that Damone Clark has cooked man-to-man. Mm-hmm. And I know that my offensive line is going to give Josh Allen time. That's how confident they were. Yeah. So much so that I'm going to take my running back, who is lined up five to six yards behind the line of scrimmage, next to my quarterback in the shotgun, and I'm going to run him on a 20-yard corner route. A 20-yard corner route from the backfield. And I'm going to have time to get it there. And he's going to have time to get up on that linebacker and run right by him because it's a it, it is a mismatch. Yeah, uh, they're first in in dime and they're first in man. Yeah, there you that's go. That's what it was. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like, that has to be addressed too. If you want to play so much man to man, you don't do it this week. If you thought <laughs> yeah. Cook was bad, gosh, oh man, yeah. So I'm, I'm just saying like, yes, Demon Clark had a bad night, but like some things are just unrealistic expectations of players as well, and that's the reason why you have to. Uh, you, there's there's certain personnel groupings that you have based upon personnel that comes in. So many some to me, so many teams sit up there and they wait to see who's coming into the game on a substitution for the offense so that they can put their guys in because you want the right matchup. Putting Damone Clark uh, inside the box linebacker on a four three running back is just just a bad idea. Yeah. Eight 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 five five. Or actually, that's the phone line. We're not taking phone calls today. Sorry, guys. We're taking them tomorrow. Eight one seven two nine zero three two nine eight. That's the text line. Eight one seven two nine zero three two nine eight. When we come back, we're gonna hit some of these text messages. You can still get yours in on time when we come back, and then we're also gonna take a look forward to that Miami matchup. Which one, physicality or speed, concerns you the most with this team moving into that Week 16 matchup on Christmas Eve? More to come from Talking Cowboys right after this. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Are you ready to take coffee off your grocery list forever? Black Rifle Coffee Club is here to help. As a coffee club member, you'll get your favorite coffees roasted, packaged, and shipped to your door free of charge on your preferred schedule. Set it, forget it, and never run low on coffee again. Members also get exclusive deals on coffee, products, and discounts from partner brands. Ease your mind and let Black Rifle worry about your coffee supply. 
Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com to join the coffee club today. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at GetJackBlack.com slash Cowboys with the code CowboysVIP. That's get Jack black.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable and now todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour <laughs> but the good news is todd has at&t 5g that is fast reliable and secure and he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew at&t 5g fast reliable secure it's not complicated 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talking Cowboys. Welcome back into Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. This segment is brought to you by Invisalign, the official smile of the Dallas Cowboys. We're trying to smile here in Frisco, and it hasn't been great. There's Isaiah's smile. It's fantastic. Got that Invisalign working as well. We've got Isaiah Stanback, Nick Harris, Jasmine Marshall running everything in the back. I'm Kyle Yeomans. All right, we've got a flood of text messages. Goodness, you guys are on top of it. 817-290-3298. Real quickly, you you were talking about about Joe Brady and scheming up against Damone Clark. Yes. And and how he was able to put him in some some spots there. Some binds. Uh, Damone Clark was dra- or was recruited by Joe Brady. Right, right. he knows whenever facts. he was. Uh, I mean, not recruited by Joe Brady specifically, but his staff, but by his staff at LSU that during is a fact. that time. So they know each other very well, and I mean, he was put in some tough positions yeah. last night. All right, from the five oh nine, why didn't Dan put any bigger guys on the offensive line and move Micah back to linebacker? So yeah, I had this question a lot. A couple people have sent this yeah, same I'll, question. Anybody who tweeted me, I apologize. I'm not really on Twitter like that. <clears throat> but Micah Parsons is not a linebacker. I'm sorry to tell you guys that. Is that um, dream he's, he's, he's an amazing athlete. Amazing athlete. One of the best athletes that you could ever imagine to touch the football field. But he's not a linebacker. Um, just because you're an athlete doesn't mean that you can do everything to the level of, of people who that's all they do. Um, Micah Parsons, much like we're talking about people choosing the wrong holes and, and hesitating and things of that nature – Michael Parsons, I don't think, would hesitate in terms of trying to fill a gap, but it may not be the right gap. Michael Parsons in coverage has not been great from mm-hmm. what we've seen. He looks like a fish out of water in that space. So I would hate to take your best athlete on your team and put him in a position where he cannot be intentional and put him in a space where he has to hesitate and question his decision-making and question – you know, his abilities, all that stuff. Just let him do what he does. He needs he needs more help, but he's not the answer is not putting him at linebacker. And you don't have any bigger guys. <laughs> you don't yeah. have you don't have any bigger guys to put at the defensive line position. The biggest guy that you had, you have one of those guys. And that's why <clears throat> this podcast was screaming for another one of him, just yeah. because you need a backup plan. Yeah, and I've said this a few times. I don't want to take your my best pass rusher away from what he does best and um, i'm not going to do that like if, I, if i'm coaching the defense i'm not going to pull michael parsons away mm-hmm. from what he does best to put him in the linebacking core even if that linebacking core is heavily struggling i'm just not going to do that just not me you not know, this guy you know you guys you guys we don't always agree we don't we don't always agree but i agree with both <laughs> of you on this one yeah, yeah. You, you got this one right guys i i'm right there with you but i appreciate the comment yeah no i think it's a concern i, I mean i think it's a mm. it's you're looking for answers you're yeah. searching for yeah. answers because dallas sure as hell did not have an answer yesterday they did not <clears throat> defensively especially i i think mm. There's there's options there, but uh, that's not an option to me. I, I don't think that's one where you, you can make it happen. Uh, Stanley in North Carolina says, does Dan Quinn, he called him Daniel Quinn, need to stop being so stubborn with man coverage and mix in zone at times, Nick Harris? Yeah, I think that, I think that's pretty valid, but I, I that's not a, a problem that was specific to this game. I don't I don't see that as an issue from last night. Uh, the, the passing game, I mean, it didn't even have to get tested, so I'm I'm not looking at 
at that. Yeah, if you're playing primarily zone, or if you, I'm saying not primarily, if you're rolling in zone coverages, which he does, but he just percentage-wise plays the most man in the league. If you're playing zone as a Dallas Cowboys, most likely you don't have as much run support. So if last night you had the most run support because you were playing man, what do you think would have improved in last night's game by taking a safety and moving them in and back into coverage? Mm-hmm. I I don't think I heard your question correctly. <laughs> Single high safety man coverage. Yes. Correct. Dallas runs. Yeah. Okay. Meaning that you always have eight guys near the line of scrimmage. Okay. Eight man box. Okay. By Playing more zone, okay? There are single high zones, but there's not many of them, okay? Majority of the zone coverages are played with two high shells. Mm-hmm. So if you take, if they to answer the question, if you take one of those safeties that is down near the box, near the line of scrimmage, and move him back into coverage, you have less run support than you had last yeah. night. So to appease this question, you would have been worse off had you played more zone. Well, if we're talking split safety looks, they were forced to do a lot more split safety looks last night. And they came out... I believe if it was right off the top of my head, four of the first six plays in a split safety look with Donovan Wilson and Wanye Thomas, not having Malik Hooker, it kind of forced them to figure out what to do with the safeties there. Um, you know, typically Malik Hooker is that single high guy that they trust up there mm-hmm. on that island. I, you saw J. Ron Kirsch back there at times. You saw Wanye Thomas back Correct. there at times. You saw even Donovan Wilson back there. That leads me to believe that there wasn't confidence in yeah. having that single high look. Correct. So um, it, they were forced back into split safety look, and that takes one more guy out of the box. Yeah. But and for for fans out there right quarterbacks if you have most quarterbacks have two plays going up to the line of scrimmage all right i come there's usually a pass play and a run play if i come up to the line of scrimmage and i see single high coverage okay depending on what i believe it is most likely i'm going to pass the ball it's not what you want you don't want eight guys near the line of scrimmage for your six seven guys blocking okay so but if i come out and i see too high even if i have a pass called most likely i'm going to change it to the run because there's less run support we have a greater probability of having success on a running play when there's two safeties back and not one of them near the line of scrimmage. So in terms of what you want to see a mix in of more zone coverages, there's a method to the madness. If you can have more guys near the line of scrimmage for run support and still be able to handle your responsibilities and coverage, that's, that's, that is the best situation possible. It's interesting to, to hear all of the different possibilities there. And, I think there were multiple things wrong. We said that earlier. Everybody got beat, and there were multiple things wrong. But that's one thing that you could maybe do to remedy a bit of what happened, especially whenever you play against the speed of Miami coming up this upcoming week. Just, just had to say it, huh? He just had to say it. A uh, couple questions about the penalties. I'm going to try and merge these questions together here. Uh, how big of an impact do you feel like the three personal foul penalties had on the overall mindset? of this team do you think it yeah. played a, a significant factor i certainly did some just flew in my eye right as i was like oh. trying to get to that point we'll but yeah to- <laughs> absolutely um you, you handled that adversity yeah show. i know well done um the three touchdown drives uh the three first touchdown drives in the first half the first one uh aided by the demarcus lawrence roughing the passer call which weak yeah i didn't love it it was weak i didn't love it i didn't love the call but you know it got called it was late it was it high get called. it was late and it was high so i like i, I understand it to a certain point that gave chest. them four points the chest is high that that gave them four points uh then you look at the sam williams or roughing the kicker roughing the punter whatever you want to call it penalty play. that is the most sam williams penalty of all time yes. i tweeted it out when it happened that For was real. like first off how did he miss the block he was there by like a second that, that should have been a touchdown go to kyle's twitter yeah. we, we broke it down so that's we that's did. that's seven points. So that's we're looking at eleven now, and then the third touchdown drive had both the fumble, where Marquise Bell forced it, and it, good job by Buffalo getting back up to the line, realizing yep. that no home and, cook in there. You yeah. didn't get a replay, didn't get a look, and then it also uh, it was also aided by the curse fifteen yard penalty on that was a second two. and nineteen incompletion that would have yep. forced a third and nineteen was also weak. Was weak. I'll, I'll give you that. So that's 18 points there in the first half. That's pretty much uh, almost that entirely deficit. aided by penalties. And you go to the half down 21-13, which is 18, 18 points. points. So, yeah, absolutely. I, that, that killed the mentality, I think, from a certain point. And when, when you're battling mistakes and battling shooting yourself in, in, in your own foot, then, yeah, yeah that's, that's always going to be a tough battle to overcome when you're having to fight both the other team and yourself. Yeah. Uh, final question. This is from Ashley in San Diego, a, a loyal listener, and she's, she asked about uh, the, the, the offensive play calling. And, and by Ashley standards said vanilla offensive play calling in the way that it happens whenever Lyman's, Lyman goes down. We, we kind of addressed that a little bit earlier. 
do you feel like that's a concern moving forward, the change in mentality in the middle of a game, or is that something that is uh, a normal thing for a play caller like Mike McCarthy to go through in the ebbs and flows of a game? I'll let Isaiah start here. It's a tough question. I'm not sure that I agree that it was vanilla. I don't like the things that I didn't like from last night's play calling really just go to the the swapping of running backs. Mm-hmm. I want to see more Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard had, a, had, what, 13 touches? Yep. On the night, 11 on the ground, two, I think, in the air. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's – you got to have more. He looked good last he's, night, he's, too. Uh, you got to have more. He was – this dude was – he was killing it. He had, what, five, five and a half yard average, somewhere around there? 4.7, but that's still solid. Okay, yeah, solid. Super solid. Five yard carries. You know, I mean, you know, like, like, give him the rock. So I think you need more of that. I think the situation of the game, the, the game management, took you out of some of the things you wanted to do. But I think that you could have still continued to strike them with your running game. Um, Dak missed throws. Dak missed some throws. That, yeah. I mean, that's reality as well. He yesterday. wasn't perfect either. He, he did not have a good day. Um, that's back to back, not great days for you know games for Dak. The last week wasn't great, but you were able to to handle some business otherwise. And then this week was just not wasn't a good situation so that's something he has got to go back and look at himself in the mirror as well yeah it's unfortunate i think the mvp campaign kind of died yesterday with this loss but um nevertheless i was still a great year so far talking about the play calling um yeah i think there's a lot of truth in it being especially when zach martin went down i mean i talked about it in the first segment i feel like when zach martin went down everything got simplistic again and they ran back to uh the problems that they had back in arizona it just kind of the offense felt almost exactly how it did in that second half against arizona yeah, yeah so that was the first thing that it reminded me of it wasn't as bad as san francisco because san francisco it was just they were forced you just got at that beat. point yeah that yeah. was just that was completely different but like if you're ranking how bad it was from like a one to ten scale one being the worst ten being the best like san francisco was one this was a two so and I'd put you know Arizona second half in that two range as well so. yeah and you mentioned the MVP conversation I think if if Dak balls out and they win these final three games and the, he goes on a just a tangent and somehow you win the division I still think it's alive but man I, I agree and if you have Philly win tonight against Seattle, you can go ahead and kiss the division Seattle's goodbye. I think Seattle's going to well, 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 I hope so. Well, if, even if Philly beats so. Seattle tonight, if the Giants beat Philadelphia one of those two times, the Cowboys are leading the division. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying Seattle that's still will out win. there. Seattle will win tonight. I love your, positives, or your, your positivity it's there. Not, I'm not, I love, I'm not hey, giving you positivity. I'm Seattle just saying like, it's not will as win. daunting as it seems. It's not as daunting Seattle as it seems. Seattle will win in Seattle tonight, and Seattle Kraken will win tonight against the Stars. Yeah, there's no way on that one. That's Boom. second one. Tough acting tonight. I have far more confidence in the Dallas Stars <laughs> to get it done tonight. You're crazy, man. Yeah, far more. Far more. All right. That does it for us here on Talking Cowboys. It's okay, fellas. We're good. We okay, guys? Dust it off. We fine. I Dust wrote I wrote on five takes last night the headline, believe it or not, the sky is not falling. The sky's oh. not falling? What? No. There's, not, a, there's a lot that can the, still be worked on. There's a lot of time. It's not the Truman Show. But <laughs> got three yeah, more not weeks. It's not Chicken Little. Yeah. You know. I like it. All right. Three more weeks to go. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to take your phone calls tomorrow. You better line up those text lines, Wait those phone call. lines. We have at least four weeks left. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot more than that. We're playing until mid-February, everybody. We guaranteed four games. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Cowboys made the playoffs, so guaranteed four games. Go Seahawks tonight. Let's uh, go. Go Stars tonight. All right, for Jasmine Marshall in the back, for Isaiah Stanback, Nick Harris, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long from Talking Cowboys. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!